being conspicuously silent is almost less bad than uh, than doing what most people are doing, which is sort of participating in this thing that they believe is professional wrestling. That's actually the expression I heard from a from a blogging editor one time. He said, "Don't you know this is all professional wrestling?" And it's like, "No, this is." This is real. This is real. And also, when you're writing about me, I'm a real person. This is my real life. This has real consequences for people. And so I think the public watching this on television, it, it's like we know professional wrestling is fake. The audience is in on that. But the news is, it has become professional wrestling or become reality television in many cases. But it still has the veneer of, of, of journalism, what we associate with being journalism and truth. And I think that is the core problem that our democracy has right now. So there's not a problem with doing an entertaining show. Sure. As long as it's true. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and strives to correct the things they have wrong. Doing an entertaining show. But we're doing now, the media is doing an entertaining show that is provably, in many cases, on both sides, false. Yes. And they are ignoring it intentionally, either for ratings or for their own agenda. When in increasingly it's not even the news business anymore. What it is is people's opinions about the news business. Right. So, like, uh, I always, like, if you, if you pulled up SportsCenter or uh, FS1 right now, you'd have a bunch of people speculating, like one of my favorite sort of lower third graphics, uh, it was like a, a first take one, and it was like, who will win the game tonight? That was like what they were debating. And it's right. like, hey, guess what? That's going to work itself out, guys. Like, <laughs> right. like we don't need to have, right. but, but you pull up the news, you think, like, there is this earnestness in the American public that says, like, my duty as a citizen is to be informed. And the way to be informed is to watch the news and read the news and listen to the news. And what happens is these outlets are exploiting that by saying, we're going to pretend to inform you, but really we're just going to speculate about what the facts will be or we'll give you our opinions about what the facts should be. And so people are watching this feeling like they're contributing to the process when really they're like watching a refraction it's, of the refraction of the process. It's amazing. I, I remember when I was at CNN, uh, the editor of the San Francisco Examiner, I think, was on my show. And he said, you're a journalist. And I said, no, I'm not. And he said, well, yes, you are. And I said, no, I never went to school for journalism. I'm not a journalist. I'm yeah. an opinion guy. Yeah. And there's a big difference. And he said, no, but you're a journalist. And he, it, for some strange reason, he really wanted me to be a journalist. And I remember having this argument. And, I, and after he left, I looked in the camera and I went, I'm not a journalist. Right. Okay, there yeah. is a difference. Oh, of course. Uh, yeah. And, but and now I don't think there is. I no. think people sit in... You know, there was a turning point, I think, you know, when you can mock something from the inside, it usually spells the death of it. Yeah. And, and that's pretty much what I was doing at Fox. I was mocking that whole system from the inside. Um, and, and I think others thought, journalists thought, oh, well, I can do this and I can spout here and there. And that's not what you, sh that's, that's a different job. Well, what, one, of, one of my theories is that sort of Twitter is at the root of this. So if you think about what the role of, let's say, a print journalist used to be, it would be thinking in long form, mm -hmm. right? Nuance, balance, uncomfortable truth, right? All, all these things that they were trained for years and, and as the job entailed for decades, even centuries, that's, what a journal, that's how a journalist thought about the world. So that's how you know, a journalist is able to know that FDR is in a wheelchair but not publish it, right? Or, or uh, that th they're able to um, criticize corruption even though it might be someone that they support and so on and so forth. Well, now you, you, you replace that nuance. So instead of thinking about the world in 2,000 words, the way that a New York Times reporter might have, uh, or, or, or you know, a, even longer than that, now the world has been compressed down into 140 characters or 280 characters, and it's also immediacy. So a newspaper reporter might have worked on a story for two weeks mm -hmm. or six months or two years. Now they are supposed to... Churn. Or not even supposed to. They have taken it upon themselves to play this wicked game of sort of what's trending. And so I think it, the Kavanaugh hearings were a great example of this, where you had a New York Times reporter in 140 characters giving her opinion of whether Kavanaugh is guilty or not. 
and then a couple weeks later writing an article about it as if she's an objective journalist just thinking about the facts. And it's like, that, that is an impossible situation to put someone in to be like, okay, some days for free, you're an entertainer who just says whatever pops into your mind on Twitter. And then by the way, take off that hat, go do real research, think in long form. And I think it's almost broken the brains of a lot of these people. They no longer are able to handle the complexity and the contradictions of reality.